Have you ever wondered why planes fly over the North Pole and not the South Pole? It's one of those curiosities that many of us have pondered at some point. As our eyes trace the red lines of flight paths on globes or in-flight magazines, we might find ourselves asking, what's the deal with those polar routes? Well, it's not just a random choice made by pilots to give passengers a unique view of Santa's workshop. There's a whole world of science, geography, and even politics behind this intriguing aerial preference. In this video, we're going to explore the fascinating reasons why, when you're jetting off to exotic locations, your plane is more likely to cruise over the icy expanse of the Arctic rather than the penguin-populated Antarctic. Buckle up, folks. We're not just flying from point A to point B, we're taking a journey into the heart of aviation science. So let's delve into the reasons behind this fascinating aerial preference. One of the most common reasons for this North Pole preference is something called the Great Circle Route. Now you might be wondering, what on earth is the Great Circle Route? Well, it's not as complex as it sounds. Picture a sphere, any sphere, but for our purposes, let's imagine the Earth. The Great Circle is simply the largest circle that can be drawn on the surface of that sphere. It represents the shortest distance between two points on the globe, cutting right through the Earth's core. Think of it like this. If you stretched a string taut between two points on a globe, the string would trace out a Great Circle route. This is why, despite the Earth being a sphere, straight line paths on a map often look curved. They're following the curve of the Earth, the path of the Great Circle. Now how does this relate to aviation? Well, airplanes, like all of us, prefer to take the shortest route to their destination. The Great Circle route enables them to do just that. By following this path, airlines can shave off miles and by extension time and fuel. That's right, this isn't just about convenience, it's also about efficiency. Consider a flight from New York to Tokyo. If you trace a straight line on the map, it looks like the most direct route would be due west, right across the Pacific. But in reality, the quickest path takes the plane north, up over Alaska, and then down through Russia. This is the magic of the Great Circle route. This route isn't just for long-haul flights. Even shorter journeys, like from London to Istanbul, follow a Great Circle path that arcs slightly to the north. It's all about the geometry of spheres, and how we can use it to our advantage. So the Great Circle route is one of the key factors influencing the path of our flights. Another significant reason involves our planet's magnetic field. Earth you see acts like a giant magnet with two poles, the magnetic North Pole and the magnetic South Pole. But here's the catch. These magnetic poles aren't lined up perfectly with the geographic poles. In particular, the magnetic North Pole is situated closer to the geographic North Pole. This proximity results in a stronger magnetic field in the Northern Hemisphere. Now why does this matter? Well, most aircraft rely on magnetic compasses for navigation. The compass needle aligns itself with the Earth's magnetic field, pointing towards the magnetic north. This allows pilots to determine their direction relative to true north, thereby aiding in navigation. So, it's not just about the shortest distance or fuel efficiency, but also about the Earth's magnetic field and the practicality of navigation. Thus, the magnetic north pole plays a crucial role in deciding the flight routes. Lastly, but certainly not least, the Antarctic Treaty comes into the picture. This treaty, established in the 60s, plays a pivotal role in the patterns of aviation around the globe. It is a unique international agreement that brings together several countries, all committed to preserving the pristine environment of Antarctica. The Antarctic Treaty has some specific regulations that directly impact aviation. These regulations are primarily aimed at minimizing human impact on this untouched wilderness, and they play a significant role in shaping the routes that planes take around the world. One of the key stipulations of the treaty is that it restricts overflying and landing of aircraft in the South Pole region. This means that commercial airlines cannot simply decide to fly their planes over Antarctica. Such a restriction is put in place to protect the local environment from the potential risks and pollution that can come from aircraft. You might wonder what harm could an airplane do so high up in the sky? Well, the concern is not just about the physical presence of the planes. The exhaust emissions from aircraft can have a detrimental effect on the ozone layer especially in the extremely cold conditions of the Antarctic atmosphere. Moreover, in the unfortunate event of an aircraft accident, the potential for environmental damage is immense. The harsh and remote conditions of Antarctica make any cleanup operation incredibly challenging. This is another reason why the treaty seeks to limit aircraft operations in the region. But the Antarctic Treaty isn't just about restrictions, it also encourages scientific research and promotes international cooperation. 
It's a testament to how nations can come together to protect our planet's most vulnerable regions. In the grand scheme of things, the Antarctic Treaty is more than just a piece of international law. It's a symbol of our collective responsibility to the environment, and a significant factor in the way we navigate our world. So, the Antarctic Treaty is a significant reason we don't see planes flying over the South Pole. In conclusion, the flight paths of planes are not arbitrary. This journey through the sky has led us to understand the intriguing reasons behind why planes fly over the North Pole and not the South Pole. We delved into the importance of the Great Circle Route, a principle based on the Earth's spherical shape that helps pilots cover the shortest distances between two points. This path naturally leads planes over the North Pole, saving both time and fuel. Then, we explored the role of the Earth's magnetic field. It's the compass guiding our flights, and with the magnetic north being more accessible and reliable for navigation, it's no wonder our planes prefer the northern skies. Lastly, the Antarctic Treaty came into play, a testament to how international laws and environmental concerns can shape our aerial paths, restricting flights over the South Pole. So, the next time you're on a flight, remember these fascinating factors that determine the path your plane takes.